Well, it's been a good morning, and I'm excited to kick off. We're starting a new series. If I haven't met you, my name is Josh. On a count of three, if you could just tell me your name, that would be great. One, two, three. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey. Come on, I wanted to hear your name. Let me hear your name on a count of three. One, two, three. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. We're so glad that you're here. We're kicking off a series in James today. Somebody say James. The book of James, it is a small book, about five chapters, not about, there's actually five chapters in James, and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be going through this series together, and I want to encourage you, if you've got a Bible, if you've got, does anybody carry around any of these anymore? This type of Bible, if you have your phone, you can go on your phone, download the YouVersion Bible app. I want to encourage you. We're going to start in James chapter 1 today. Go to James chapter 1. Also, use your phone or, or be prepared to write down some notes when we show up. How many people know that we don't want to just show up? We don't want to, we, we, we don't come. I mean, we could be doing a lot of things on a Sunday morning, but we show up because we're expecting God to show up. And we're expecting to leave change. We're expecting that God is going to share a word. He's going to whisper to us. He's going to encourage us. Because like Pastor Rob shared earlier, how many know life is tough? Man, we need each other. And when we show up on a Sunday morning, we are showing up to hear and experience God. I don't want us to just show up and go through the motions. And so we can, we, can, we can get out of it whatever we put into it. I love my college basketball coach. Every time we would show up at practice, he's like, all right, we're going to take a step today, guys. We're going to take a step. He's saying, man, every day, let's just take a step. Let's keep getting better. Let's keep getting better. Let's keep growing. Let's keep developing. Can I tell you, when we show up and if we keep taking a step, if we keep allowing God to change us, man, before you know it, we're not who we, we used to be. We look back on our life. And we say, wow, I'm a different person today. I just want to know, is anybody different today than you were on January 1st, 2019? I don't know if you know this, but we're in the first weekend of November. We're getting ready to enter into a new year. How many people would say, man, the the year flew? I love the the, the saying, and I agree with it, the days are long, but the years are fast. We're already getting through 2019. Our prayer is that when we look back over 2019, we look back over a year and we say, God, change me. And the reason we can say that is because roughly 52 weekends at least out of the year when we showed up, God showed up and we walked away changed. And so as we get into James, I hope you're ready to learn this morning. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. Turn to somebody and say, get ready. Tell them, say, this message is for you. I'm glad you're here. We're going to get into James, and we're going to look at some very specific things in James, but this is, this is honestly what my heart and hope is. I love the, the, the theme for this series. It says, walk this way, faith in action. Somebody say, faith in action. Faith in action. I'm an I'm a action guy. Like, I like, to, I, I, I like to get together. I like to talk. I like to pray, but I'm like, man, let's go. Let's go. Like, that's probably my favorite saying, let's go. I love action. I love the book of James because it is an action-packed book. Every chapter, many of the verses, I mean, when when you read James, it calls us to take action. And we'll see it as we go through some of those, those scriptures. But more than even just diving into James today, can I tell you that the Word of God changes our lives? And one of the reasons that we're going through James is because it's a very simple and short book. And our our prayer is is that we wouldn't just show up on Sundays and hear what one of the speakers says about James, but that throughout the week we would take time and we would read James. Look at somebody and tell them, say, James is for you. Just in case you were wondering, James isn't just for the other person. James is for you. James is for all of us. The Word of God is for all of us. It's powerful, it's living, it's breathing. And our prayer is is that as people, we would get into the Word of God and allow it to change and transform our lives. It's a game changer. And so more than even today, more than just getting into James, my prayer is is that we would walk away and say, I got to get into God's Word. I see the value 
of God's word in my life. And I see how God's word can change and transform me. And if 2019, if 2020 is going to be a year where my life looks different, it's because I spent more time in the word of God than ever before. I say this all the time. My wife is beautiful. I expected more amens than that. At least right now you can say amen to that. My wife is incredibly beautiful. When I saw her, I was like, dang, this girl look good. But the most attractive thing about my wife is her intentionality to spend time in God's word on a daily basis. And if anybody's got stuff going on, when you got four kids and when kids are waking up at all hours and getting up in the morning and her intentionality to make sure it is a priority in her life is the most attractive thing about my wife. And can I tell you, she's more beautiful today than she was when I married her 12 years ago. Because God continues to change her. And he does that for every single one of us. I hope I look better as a husband today than I did 12 years ago. Do I? All right, thank you. Holla at your boy. It's going to be a good day. But that can be the truth for every single one of us. Many of you know, a couple of weeks ago, my grandfather passed away. He was 90 years old. He lived an incredible life. And recently, different people, friends of ours here at church have had loved ones pass away. And I know other people are, are struggling with, with health challenges. And I say this whenever I do a funeral, and I believe this, that there's nothing that sheds light on life like death. There's nothing that gives you a clear picture of reality and what life is really all about than when you stare death in the face. And when you're at a funeral and, and, and you see an individual and you see their lifeless body, your mind starts to go to places that on a typical day it otherwise doesn't. And as we celebrated my grandfather in 90 years, he's from a small town in Iowa, uh, Defiance, Iowa, population 300. And we, we, we talked about the fact that at his funeral, we're having a funeral on 45th and Bedford. I don't know if you guys know this, but Defiance, Iowa, population 300, 99.9% .9 white. 99.9999% white. My dad lived there, so, you know, he got a little something-something on the inside of him. <laughs> but 100% white. We had my grandpa's funeral right here on 45th and Bedford. Yeah. And the diversity that was represented in the room. Yeah. It was a picture of his life and, and how God used his, his life and how, especially hearing stories in his latter years, as he turned his life over to Jesus, he went from being this real serious and intense guy to this joy-filled guy and a person that loved people unconditionally regardless of what they look like. And to celebrate his life and the legacy that he would leave. When we're confronted with death, we get a picture of what really matters in life. We get, we get a picture, and, and we start to get a glimpse of, man, the, the, that, that there is a beginning and there is an end. And that we don't know the time or the hour, but at one point in time, for all of us, we're going to be gone from this earth. The Bible says that our time here is but a, a, a small little uh, blink in time. We're here to get day and gone tomorrow. I mean, the one story of, of a... a a brother that just passed away, he was at his son's basketball game, starts having head pains. He's gone within a couple of days. We don't know. But what we can do is we can understand that there is an end to our lives. And understanding that there's an end and understanding what our life, what we want to be known for at the end can help us make decisions today that will lead to the type of person that we want to become. Having a vision for our life, the, the challenge is a lot of us go through life aimlessly. We just go through life and we go through the motions and maybe the visions we have are for short-term realities, but how many know there's an eternal reality? 
How many know that like Pastor Rob said, we don't have to wait until our life here on earth is done. We can actually live with an eternal perspective, heaven on earth, right here, right now. But it doesn't happen by accident. It happens because we have a vision for what life can be like. This is what I want us to do. I want us to all close our eyes. I'm going to do a, a, a short little quick exercise. Eyes are closed. And I want you to envision that you're going to a funeral. And you get to the funeral and the music is playing. You get to the funeral, you see some faces of people that you know. You get to the funeral, you see a casket. And as you get to the funeral, you realize that it's your funeral. And somebody close to you gets up and they're getting ready to talk about you. She was, he was, what are they saying about you? Based on the life you're living today, what are they saying about you? What are the stories that they're telling? What's the vision that you're seeing? I want you to think about what are the stories that you want them to tell? What do you want to be known for? How many know that it is a sobering reality to think of the end of your life? And to think that one day it'll all be done. But how many of us know that when we take time to think about the end, and we take time to envision not what we want to do, but who we want to be. And he was a loving father. He was somebody, I take, I've taken time and I've done this exercise a variety of different times and I would encourage you to continue to do it. But I've written out six different areas. What, what do I want to be known for in my faith? I want to be known for a man after God's heart. I, I want people to say at the end of my life that he had wisdom that was only from God. My family. I want, my, I want to be a father that my kids love to be with. I want to be a husband that my wife feels like she's the most important person in the world. I want to be fit by 50. Holla at your boy. Every day I want to be fueled and energized through fitness. I want to be a friend to everyone but a friend that someone can count on and rely on. I want to fight for financial freedom. I want to be known for faith when it comes to my finances and faithfulness. I look at these different areas of my life and I get a vision for who I want to become and where I want to go. My question is, is what is the vision you have for your life? Because the Bible says that without a vision, people perish. In other words, without a vision, we can go through life, and at the end of our lives, our lives won't really be about the things that matter the most. Without a vision, people perish, which means without a vision, we can go through life and the relationships, the things, the, 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 the job that we were chasing, the relationships that we were chasing, the, the community that we were hoping to live in, the cities that we were hoping to travel in, ultimately none of them will fulfill us and they'll leave us dead, empty, lifeless. But when we have a vision and when we take time to write it down, that vision can lead us towards a destination that helps us look more like Jesus. And so my, my, my heart and prayer and belief is that when we have a vision for our lives, then we'll have a value for God's word. 
Because many of us don't see the value of God's word because we can't attach it directly to our lives based on where we are today. But when we get a vision for our life and who God wants us to be, and that vision's dynamic, it'll constantly change, it'll constantly evolve. But then we say, oh my goodness, there's value in God's word. When I read God's word, it changes me, it grows me. Can I tell you that Ephesians 3.20, God says uh, that, 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 that the spirit of God within us can do infinitely and abundantly more than we can ask, hope, or imagine. Can I tell you the vision you have for your life is small compared to God's vision? Ephesians 2.10, uh, he says that, that you are, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do the good works that he's prepared for us long ago. Every single one of us, God has a plan for our life. It's bigger, it's better, it's more audacious than we could ever imagine, but we'll never get there on our own. But we'll never see the value in getting in God's word unless we have a vision for our lives. And if we could walk away today and we could start to get a vision for what life could look like, I believe we'll also walk away saying, wow, there's value in reading God's word. Because I can tell you this, anybody that you see, uh, if their life is of value in some way, shape, or form, A, it didn't happen by accident, and B, I promise you the word of God has been changing them. It's been changing them. A couple of scripture verses that... I just wanted to share that aren't on the screen is Psalms 119, 105. It says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So that's what the word of God does. We get a vision. Man, it, it, it lights our path. It helps us know what's the next step, God. What door are you opening up? What decisions do I need to make? Hebrews 4, 12, it says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the divisions of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, of discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Can I tell you, no matter where you are, when you get into God's word, it'll speak to you. It'll speak to you in the specific way that we need it to speak to us. There's power in God's word. We get a vision for our life. We start to see the value in God's word. When we start to see the value in God's word, we'll actually start to get into God's word. And so as a, as a church right now, we're saying, man, together, let's get into James. Starting in James chapter 1, one of the most practical books in the Bible. When you open up the Bible, there's really, it's one story with two main parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Don't start in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, it, it, you know, if you, if, if you start in the Old Testament, the Old Testament was God's story told through his people. And so in the beginning when God created man and woman and then man and woman made a mistake and sin entered the world, God kept trying to tell his story through people. It would be like, you know that game where you whisper something in somebody's ear and then they have to whisper it to the next person? It'd be like me starting over here, whispering something in somebody's ear and expecting what I whispered in their ear over here to be the same thing that we hear over here. It ain't happening. Humans, we get in the way of God's original intent and, and, and plan. And so in the Old Testament, we see God trying to speak through people and people continuing to forget, getting on tr off track, God trying to redirect them. Starting in the Old Testament would be like looking at a manual for how to build a spaceship, but not knowing you were trying to build a spaceship. You have no real picture of where all this is going. But when you start in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John, it's three stories or three, three um, books that are all about Jesus' life. It's called the Gospels. Talks about the good news of Jesus. Jesus was the perfect picture in the fulfillment of everything that happened in the Old Testament. That's the word. Jesus was the word. The word became flesh. We got to see a picture that says, man, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. And so in Jesus, we get a picture. And so James is in the New Testament. James is the half-brother of Jesus. James saw Jesus, spent time with Jesus. Can I tell you, if we're going to learn from some people, let's learn people who had a first-hand account of Jesus, this God that we serve. So we get a vision for our life. We start to value God's word. Then we start to, to get in it, and we don't have enough time to go through all of James, but 
when we're, getting, when we're getting into God's word, when we start to value God's word, I want to go to that slide that has the four things I want us to do. Number one is you got to get ready. How many know that preparation is a key part in, 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 in being a part of whether you're reading scripture, whatever you're doing, but preparation matters. We have to set ourselves up for success. And so in preparation, we're asking some quish, simple questions. Man, when are we going to do it? Where are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? Well, man, for me, it's first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. Actually, second thing. First thing is make coffee. <laughs> Where am I going to do it? I got a, a, a spot right there on the couch that I do it. When, where, how, I'm going to prepare myself. And then I'm also going to say, all right, God, speak to me. Before I get into your word, I want you to speak to me. I'm preparing my heart and my mind. Then I get to the verse and I start to, to read the verse. What does the Bible say in these scriptures that I'm reading? And I would encourage you too. There's, there's Bibles that have concordances. You can look stuff up. I mean, it just helps give context to what you're reading. So what does the Bible say? Number three, I get to spend time reflecting. What is it that I'm reading that speaks to me? Like I said, this is the thing about God's Word. It's living, it's alive, it's active. It speaks specifically to where we are in, in the moment of our life. We can all read the same scripture, and God can speak to us very differently. Number three, or number four, we got to respond. And that's what I love about James chapter 1, it's, it talks about this idea of putting our faith into action. Can we go to James chapter 1, verse 1, just real fast? James chapter 1, I'm going to go to verse 2. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For you know when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfected and complete, needing nothing. How many people consider it a pure joy when you face trials of many kinds? I mean, come on, that's what the Bible says. How many know that in sports, if you want to be the best, you got to put in the work? How many know at work, if you want to be the best, you got to put in the work? How many know in every area of life, growth is, a, is reliant on tension and challenge? The same is true when it comes to our faith. Faith or challenges give us an opportunity to grow the deepest parts of who we are. Man, I could preach a whole message on that if we had the time. But I, I guarantee this, some of us are facing some serious trials. Some of us are going through it right now. And can I tell you, just being reminded that, man, when I'm going through it, God, you're doing something in my life. When I'm going through it, guess what? It's not all for nothing. It's for something. And I can actually count it pure joy because I know I'm going somewhere. This is a part of the process. These scars have, have, have purpose behind them. Number, uh, verse 5, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure your faith is in God alone. Do not wave, waver. For a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. This is so powerful. Because we can ask God for wisdom and he'll give it to us. But guess what? We can't have one foot in, one foot out. We got to be all or nothing. See, the thing is, God wants to show up on our behalf. He wants to do more than we can imagine. He's just waiting for us to go all in. And sometimes we ask God for wisdom. We ask him for insight. We ask him to show up. And he's just saying, man, I'm just asking you to make a decision. I'm waiting for you to choose. Are you in or are you not? The Bible says either be hot or cold if you're lukewarm. Jesus says, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Man, this stuff speaks. Say, God's word speaks. Come on. Verse 7 says, such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. How many, how, how, how many people would say, man, I could read this and this would speak to me? Like, this ain't over my head. This is practical. This is real. This is relevant to my life. Man, I want to go through this whole thing, but I know I don't have enough time. Skip to the next group. Skip after this too. Skip. 
You can even skip scriptures. You see that? <laughs> skip. I love this. Understand, dear, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Next. I just wanted to see if I was going to get an amen there. Amen. Come on. I love this part. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says, otherwise you are fooling yourselves. Uh. I love the, 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 the saying I heard recently. It says, to learn something but to not do it is to never have learned it. To know something but not do it means that you never have known it or have learned it. I heard uh, somebody who's a teacher uh, this week, she said, you know, if you, if you just try to cover the material, it'll be buried forever. In other words, that's why it's so important when we read God's word, we try to apply it to our lives. Because it's in the application that our faith grows. It's in the application that it's a reflection of what we actually believe. If you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then, somebody say then, then God will bless you. We can get a vision for our life. Man, this is who I want to be. This is who God wants me to be. It gives us a value for his word because we start to say, wow, I'm telling you what, there's so much in James chapter 1. We could have only read a couple verses. And honestly, a lot of mornings I only read a couple verses. And I just read those verses. And I'm like, God, what are you speaking and saying to me? Sometimes I don't even ask that. It just jumps out. Hello. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Man, all right, God, how do you want me to respond? Shut up. Yes, Lord. Real quickly, I want to invite up Tyrese and, and Mo, just real quick, as we come to a close. I just, I, I, I wanted to, I think it's so important for us to get a vision for what this looks like in real life. And I think sometimes we can hear this type of stuff. Or you can look at me, and, oh, that's Josh, man. He's up there speaking all the time and this and that. But, like, this is real. And for me, I get to see it played out all across this room. And it's one of the coolest things ever. Seeing God's word transform real lives. It happens, and it's happening. And I asked these two guys to come up here because I think their stories are a picture of what that looks like. And I want them both to start. I'm going to start with Tyrese. We'll go through his real quick first. But I want them to start just describing what rock bottom looked like. Because how many know that when we are at rock bottom, when we are at our lowest, God a lot of times is at his closest. When we hit rock bottom, we start to see our need for God. And so Tyrese, just describe for us what did rock bottom look like for you? So rock bottom was, um, was a lot of hopelessness but I was homeless um, and I was addicted to what the world had to offer. Drugs, alcohol, parties. And then I was on the brink of divorce. I lost what was so close to me. My wife and my kids had walked out on me. And that's when I knew I hit rock bottom. So you're at, you're at rock bottom, God gets your attention. Starts connecting you with the right people. What was the vision? I mean, what did you want? I know that's not what you wanted for your life. What was the vision that you wanted for your life? So I had a vision of being not just a father, but a great father. Because mm. I knew my, I, I knew he was great. For him to bring me from rock bottom into a place to where I could, I could relate to him and get in his word and, and it could change me. I wanted to be a great father, but I wanted to be a great husband that seen my wife and valued her as the value God's Come word on. was. Come on. You hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. 
you have some sort of a vision for your life. You didn't want to be where you were. Right. And over the course of several years, you start showing up. How many people know we don't change in a day, but we change every day? And if we get in God's word, every day he changes us. And I've seen your life. You see this guy today, man, he's not who he used to be. How many people would attest to that? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. But my question is, is what does it look like for you to get in God's word? Yep. Spend time with him. Early morning, um, I think I I get up at 3 a.m. and I I set the table to really receive from God. And um, I've got to give just really give respect to who's in this room. There's some brothers in here that hold me accountable. We're doing devotions, Marcus Wagstaff, Josh Dostler, Anthony Edwards. Like we're doing devotionals and God's word together. And and I'm just being able to receive a different perspective of what it looks like to live it out. Come on, man. So just getting up early, it's like, like you said, preparing to receive from God. Come on. Now you don't have to get up at 3 a.m. No, you don't. Don't try it. (laughs) But I just want to say this for me. When we do these, like, you can do devotions with groups of people on you version, And so we'll do group devotions. Faithfully and consistently, he's responding and taking time to ask God to speak to him. And he's sharing what God is speaking to him. I mean, consistently on a daily basis. It is not an accident. You are where you are and God is doing what he's doing in your Thank life. Thank you, Lord. I'm just telling you that. Mo, my man, we need Mo Mo in our life. Describe what rock bottom looked like for you. Uh, rock bottom to me was uh, a lot like Tyrese. And I was full of dishonesty was probably my biggest thing. Um, I looked great on the outside. Inside, I was dead, mm. completely dead. Uh, my addiction kicked back in. I had no relationship with Julie which I wanted more than anything in this world besides the relationship with God. And uh, mine was just May 1st. I can tell you the exact 1120 in the morning was when I hit rock bottom when I got called into a conference room with my old employer and 11 people were there, two of the big CEOs. That was my rock bottom. Mm. Um, It's amazing what, when you hit that, For the first time, I I actually had hope when I hit my rock bottom. Mm. I I was caught, and for the first time, I could get really genuinely honest. Come on. How how, how many people know sometimes we need to get caught? Either we can turn ourselves in, or sometimes God uses other people to turn us in. And say, man, God, we need your help. Just describe, what what does your routine look like, devotion? Um... It's weird, me and Tyrese, we've connected since day one, and I don't take this wrong. Ex-crackheads, we relate to each other. Uh, <laughs> All three of us are ex-crackheads. I was a knucklehead, they yeah, were crackheads. <laughs> but I get up early, I get up at the same time, three o'clock. Um, I was, Lord blessed me and I got a job here. Come on. To come here, an hour and a half before I have to be here Come on. to walk in this gym and sit on one of these chairs on. and look at that and realize that I am so blessed, Come on. so blessed. Uh, I on. got people Come like on. him, like Tyree, Come like on. Ron, and this man right here. Who were, and I was at my lowest lows and never thought I would could be loved or Come anyone on. loved me. Get a text from this man saying he loves me. Come on. That was awesome, guys. Come awesome. On. Come on. Can we give it up for these two? Love you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. So we're going to bring it in for a close. But I, I hear people all the time who have hit rock bottom, and they're saying, Josh, I want to be here. Or I want to be here. And can I tell you, sometimes rock bottom is right where we need to be in pursuit of the vision that God has for us. But we have to recognize that every single day we've got to take a step. Every single day we've got to get get into God's word. We've got to allow his word to change us from the inside out because the vision for our life will not be a reality unless we value the word of God and how it can change us every single day. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, thank you so much for your word. 
Thank you that it changes us, God. Thank you that it speaks to us. Lord, I pray that this morning we would get a vision for our life in a fresh way. Lord, I pray that we would value your word. Lord, I pray that this week we would get into James. We would allow it to speak to us. We'd allow it to change us. God, so that we can look back over our lives and we can actually become the man, the woman, the husband, the wife that you've called us to be. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. If you believe at Bridge Church, say amen. Amen, amen. Well, hey, as we leave, as you head out, you already know you got to high five at least seven people. Highlight, high five seven people and tell them, get in the word this week. Get in the word this week.